Okay, so let me just say that this all started because I needed a new can of Mr. Super Clear. And I went on Amazon, and the current price, the cheapest I could find, was $30. And I was like, really? $30? But then... I saw Delightful's videos, I was watching them recently, and she uses this uh, Duraclear Matte Varnish that she cuts with water. So I went to Joanne Fabrics and I found this little teeny tiny bottle for $2.50. And I was like, $2.50? Wait a minute, I can get sealant that works for $2.50? I bet I could do a face up for less than the cost of a can of Mr. Super Clear. And so this video was born. So I skipped around joyfully in Joanne Fabrics and collected the cheapest supplies that I possibly could that I thought I would need, which included Elmer's glue all. And I thought I wanted watercolor pencils, but nah, we can do this without those. I found some chalk pastels, but I didn't need that many, I didn't think, and they were $6. Then I found some more for $3 and was like, this is much better. Got some Sculpey, you'll see here, and then the yarn. I definitely wanted variegated yarn because the more colors I had in the yarn, the more versatile and useful it would be to me. So it was between this brown variegated and this like pastel Easter color and the pastel Easter colors won out. And then acrylic paint, because acrylic paint is necessary. Then it was off to the Dollar Tree. Um, please excuse the change in orientation of my recording. I had a dumb with my phone. Here is 100% acetone nail polish remover, which we need to remove the face. And then I also pick up a pack of emery boards because I have to file off any factory molded things that might be on whatever doll that I come across at a thrift store or whatever. And next comes the masking tape, which is not particularly essential, but I wanted to use it to draft a pattern for stockings, so I got some. And here is a very important piece, Neil Nose Pliers. This was the smallest brush I could find at the dollar store. Then we grabbed some hair cutting scissors. I wanted some really sharp scissors, and usually hair styling or hair cutting scissors are very sharp and small. And here's a quick pit stop to a Dollar General to get a $1 set of needles and thread. And then last but not least, I went to a Savers and I found this Draculaura. I didn't buy this actual Draculaura because I have like 8 million dolls, but just to show you that price is $5 for 3 or 4 dolls in that bag. Here is a tally of all the money I spent on this project. And likewise, I will also show you all of the things that I got for free that I used on this project as well. Just things I assume that you'll probably have around your house to use. First things first, take your acetone and remove her factory paint with a Q-tip or a napkin or whatever. Dunk her head in boiling water for a few seconds and yank it off. Then tear out all of her hair. Hooray! After that, remove the paint on the head with ac more acetone and then we blush her face. Um, I also tried to, originally I tried to change her skin color to a more neutral color, but uh, yeah, that didn't go well. Here I'm sealing it with the DuraClear matte before, while I let that dry, I start working on her bunny ears. I had always decided that she was going to be a bunny girl, like even before I started picking out anything. I just really intensely wanted to make a bunny girl, I don't know why. But yeah, so this is a paperclip that I have opened up and bent and left bent in half. And this is another paperclip bent in much the same way, or opened up in much the same way. 
And what I did was stab the two prongs into two existing hair plugs. And I used the pliers to sort of help me leverage them in there. And then carefully push them down sort of through the neck hole and twist them together. But be forewarned that don't you shouldn't pull too hard on the top of the head because you could put a hole in the top of the head if you pull too hard when you're twisting the wires together through the neck. There's definitely, I almost pulled this metal through and it was bad news. But I decided I wanted to do this now because I didn't want to give her a face up and then have to squish and pull and tug on her head to get these wires in there. So that's why I'm doing this now. I didn't think of doing it before her blushing was done. And this is where we start doing the acrylic paint face up. Originally, she was supposed to be like a super kawaii, big eyed, I don't know, cute girl, but for some reason, she sort of changed direction while I was painting her face and kind of got a mind of her own. And before I knew it, I was sort of painting this. Well, this really dark lip, and then I gave her really heavy eyeliner, and all of a sudden she had this like really pastel goth vibe, which I really like. I think she's really cute, but it's definitely not what I first envisioned when I decided to make this doll. Also, in case you're wondering what it is that I am painting with, I used thread from my little sewing kit. I cut off the end of the original Draculara hair, just a couple, just a little bit of it, and I used a little bit of glue and I literally wrapped string around the end of a toothpick after I glued some hairs to it and made a brush. I sort of took a page out of Delightful's book because I realized belatedly that I did not have a very fine brush and that was not going to work very well trying to paint tiny details on this little doll face. So yeah, I uh, made a brush and it actually seemed to handle pretty well. I was surprised, but I, I was able to get some pretty fine details. The Q-tip you see just has water on it in case I make some mistakes, which I, as you've seen a few times, I have made some mistakes. Um, and I had already decided because of my yarn that I was going to do green hair. That's why I gave her green eyebrows. Now these here are her little ear socks, which I lost the footage for because my battery died. But let me explain. I traced around the ear. Then I sewed around the line that I traced. Then I cut out the thing that I sewed and then I used a toothpick to turn it right side out and then I made a second one. So then she had two little like sort of ear socks, I guess is the best way to describe them for attaching uh, fur to or fuzz to, I guess. In order to permanently attach these little ear socks to her head, I put them on over the metal um, wires, which you'll see that I also painted her scalp before I did this. And then I lined the bottom with Elmer's glue to make a sort of seal between the scalp and the little socks. And I waited for it to dry. I probably put like two or three coats of this glue just to make sure that it was nice and solid and wasn't going to let go or give because I don't want her ears to fall off. As for that variegated yarn, I separated it into sections according to what I wanted to use them for. The green to blue sort of ombre gradient I thought would be cool for her hair. The yellow and blue sections I didn't really use. The pink I used for the middle of her ears and the white I used for the ends of her ears. I also put little uh, cotton tails on her shoes later. But this is what my piles looked like when I was done. And here I tied the white yarn around a pen and I took just a regular hair comb that was just in the drawer at my house 
and uh, the wider the teeth are actually or the bigger they are actually the better this little comb I had used at first and it like seriously deformed the comb and like it's it's useless now <laughs> so I definitely recommend using a bigger comb see I've switched to a bigger comb here and yeah just comb through the wefts and then once it gets pretty fluffy you want to turn it upside down a couple of times back and forth once it gets nice and fluffy just trim it down nice and neat you take a plastic bag and some glue and in this case my fluffy brush and paint the glue on to the ends to make yarn wefts brush out the pink yarn in the same way but I didn't make wefts out of this because I only needed a very small amount and I glued those directly onto the little ear socks as soon as they were the ear socks were dry and set I trimmed the pink down and then once my yarn wefts were dry I started gluing them on I uh, started at the tip of the ear and worked my way down and uh, in the front and on the sides especially I actually ended up cutting off the glue band of the weft and sort of glued the, the looser fluffier bits to the ear socks and it seemed to look better and more natural and then you can see here I gave it a trim after that this is how I separated the yarn into what I used for her hair so I took my piece of yarn and if you're really careful and patient and twist it in the opposite direction the yarn is actually twirled together you can separate it into four strands of it's like heavy string I guess and if you carefully undo that it gives you this sort of wavy loose curl pattern that looks like hair that is um, really cool and I like it a lot actually so yeah just slowly split every single piece of yarn you have into four strands until you well until you either lose your mind or until you have a whole lot of it like this right here and then you can put your hair on your doll unfortunately I have lost the footage of me actually gluing the hair onto my doll but I just used my regular Elmer's glue decided where my parts would be and glued it on I made flocking powder out of some of my yarns as well here um, this is basically um, if you want a very in-depth great tutorial go see Walker Colors channel that's where the tutorial I'm following to make these stockings that she's going to wear the very the scissors were pretty blunt actually they weren't very sharp so it was actually really difficult to get the masking tape off of the doll but then I just stuck it on some uh, a brown paper bag that I had a shopping bag and cut it out the actual stockings were made out of the same fabric as the ear socks and the elastic waistband was actually a rubber band here I'm using Dove candy foil wrappers because it's what I could find to use to protect the stockings while I made a Walker colors version of a pair of shoes which entailed paper mache basically watered down white glue and napkins and then I sculpted a heel from the Sculpey that I got after I did two coats of paper mache and I covered the shoe with denim that I painted lavender you'll see I painted some lavender and some black here because I didn't know what color I was gonna do and I ended up going with the purple here I am changing the color of that same white fabric that I used to make the stockings and the ear socks because I didn't have any light blue and that's what I wanted her shirt to be and I also painted this cute little bear on the front of the shirt with acrylic paint the little hook and eyes I literally made out of staples I pulled them apart one at a time and bent them into hook and eyes 
Not my favorite method of doll clothing fastening, but definitely by far the cheapest if you don't want the clothing to be sewn on permanently. Because, well, I found these staples somewhere. And here I am harvesting a zipper from an old pair of jeans that no longer fits me. It's also where I got the denim that I made the shoes out of. And uh, this zipper's a little bit big for this backpack, which makes the backpack a little bit big. But I don't mind it. It's kind of cute in how it's oversized. And here I've glued some cardboard inside of the pieces of fabric in order to make them a little bit more substantial. So that's all the footage I have for you unfortunately because my batteries kept dying on my phone and my iPad when I was trying to record this. Here are a bunch of stills so you can see her details like her rainbow painted nails and I ended up turning the bear on her shirt into a bunny. Her stockings are striped but they're striped sort of alternately uh, one side versus the other. The stripes start at the top then they're striped in the middle on the other leg and at the bottom on the other leg. And that entirely stemmed from necessity because I literally ran out of acrylic paint. It was awesome, and by awesome I mean terrible. I ran out, I used every drop of the black acrylic paint in that little set, and I used probably three quarters of the white. The other colors I had plenty of, but the black and white I definitely struggled, especially the black. Totally ran out. She turned out really well. She turned out better than I even hoped she would. She's definitely different than I originally intended her to be. She still is the bunny theme, and I like the pastel colors. Uh, she's very springy, Easter-y, I guess. So I've decided to call her Iris, which is like a springy flower. I'm thinking of maybe doing another one of these. That wouldn't be for a while anyway, so we won't worry about that now. We'll just uh, say goodbye from me and Iris, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!